Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we're continuing kind of getting back in the groove of battle reports, this time from the bridge of Tier 9 Dutch cruiser Johan de Witt, or as my good buddy Lord Zath calls it, Johan de Veilboot. Zath's nickname is born out of the fact that this was one of the first ships that you could pay an obscene amount of doubloons to get access to in early access. What, I guess, four or five months ago now? Probably longer than that. It's been a while. Uh, it's been a hot minute, right? Since the Dutch Cruiser Line came to the game. And I think the time you had to pay like twenty-five or 30,000 doubloons to, just for early access to a ship that you could earn for free later on. Pro tip, guys, I don't recommend you ever do this. Please don't spend doubloons on tech tree ships. Like, that's not a good investment of your money. Um, but it does mean that for somebody like me who doesn't have a million doubloons laying around like Zath does, I'm still grinding through this ship all these months and months and months later. Um, what I discovered, what I've discovered for myself about the Dutch cruisers is that the mid-tier ones, I think, are terrible. I don't, I don't like them. It's just me. There's so many better light cruisers in, in the 5, 6, and 7 range that, uh, you know, Kekdun and Indracht and all that, they're just not interesting to me. But starting with Harlem at tier eight and continuing on with Johan de Witt at tier nine, I have found I really, really enjoy these ships. Spawning into the south side here of Shatter with a div mate, my good buddy Shieldbreaker out there and a Fletcher, he and I uh, spent some time on a recent Sunday kind of teamed up playing some games. And this was one of the ones that I had that I thought was worthy because I feel like the Dutch cruisers get a bit of a bad rap. Even from somebody like me who plays a lot of cruiser and if I'm honest, should know better. I've kind of largely avoided these ships because in the modern meta of the game, if you don't have a lot of utility, if you're just a damage dealer, I'm looking at you, Zao or Buki, for example, you, you kind of are just sort of left behind. But some of the utility in these Dutch cruisers comes in their ability to harass, confound, and really, really beat up on very specific ships. And we're gonna talk about that over the course of the game. Luckily for me, there is a carrier in the in this game. I know all of you just rolled your eyes, Raptor. Why do you want a carrier in this game? I want a carrier in this game because I love slaughtering airplanes. And starting at tier eight, these Dutch cruisers do that just about better than anyone. There, the A on these ships is so strong, particularly the mid-range AA. The long-range AA is okay; it's not bad. But once those ships get into the three and a half kilometer range, if they're up next to your hull. They are taking obscene amounts of damage, and you will melt planes, and it is, oh, so glorious. Now, I'm going to play the 910 line here for a bit, looking for angles. Shieldbreaker has elected to hold down the sea cap. He's not going to cap. There's about three or four enemy ships up there on the backside of that island. In fact, the enemy Harlem that was moving in there is busy uh, hydroing him, keeping him lit. But as long as he plays back a little bit, he won't take too, too much damage. You see there, he has taken some, but it's not overly catastrophic. Speaking of the Harlem, there he is, as the Lion has chosen to stop. And, well, you know, if I'm good, if you're going to still go stationary against my bombs, then, well, we're going to have fun with you. And there we go, 18k and two fires on that guy, basically because he's stationary. The Dutch bombs are really, really effective against stationary, slow-moving, reversing targets, like this Lion. Like the Harlem, if I were to drop them on the Harlem. But ships like Lion are more susceptible simply because of their armor schemes. The British, the British battleships and the French battleships are among the most vulnerable to these Dutch airstrikes. And if you get the opportunity to drop them on those ships, you should absolutely take it. They will feel every bit of it and you'll rack up a lot of damage. Now, of course, this Lion has his fancy super heal, so he's going to absorb a ton of damage and... Frankly, he doesn't care about my goofy bombs right now. But hey, in a game where damage pays X, pays me back in XP and cash, I'm going to take every point I can get. Team's not doing so well on this flank. We're down a ship. That's the Kagero. He died way over on the two line. And Aramagi now is charging up the eight line into a 3v1, 4v1 if you count the, can't really count the carrier, and you really should. I think he's moving up thinking he's going to try and slap this Harlem. But the problem is there's another battleship back there. That's the Kearsarge. And you see there, the Kearsarge just wipes out over half that Amagi's HP because he was not doing a good job of protecting his uh, protecting his citadels. 
So between the Lion, the Kearsarge, and the Soyuz, the Soyuz has actually moved up a bit into that island gap along the seven line. He doesn't have shots right now, but this Amagi is not going to be very long for this game. And so before too long, um, we're going to be very, very alone on this flank because you can see the Lepanto that spawned over here. Look at the minimap. He's now on the six line moving into the center of the board as everybody and their dog is trying to depth charge those submarines that are in the middle of the map. I keep seeing enemy submarine players do this. They, like, all go to the middle of the map. It's like, guys, that just means that everyone's going to have their dump charges on you once once, once they get the opportunity. I, I don't understand why you would do this, but okay. Thanks to my bombs, the lion, and some really timely fires like that one, we're just now coming up on the six-minute mark, and I'm about to hit the 80,000 damage mark in this game. I like... I'm a huge fan of this, obviously, because, I mean, again, pays me an XP and cash, but it... But unfortunately, with the loss of the Amagi, the Soyuz has moved up into the gap. He's sitting on the cap, backed up by a Harlem, the Kearsarge, and this Lion. It's about the Kagero now. You can see him moving uh, moving east along the E-line there. It's like a 5v2 over here. Me and Shieldbreaker are basically it. This Izumo playing behind us on the H-line is not really useful or relevant in his position. So we're going to back off. There's there's no need to, to surrender a whole bunch of XP and everything right now. He's, Shieldbreaker is actually trying to get torpedoes on this Soyuz, who is declining to push up and give him the opportunity. But you can see here, I'm going to drop some aerial bombs, some of my airstrikes on this Soyuz, and the Soviet battleship deck armor is good enough that I'm really going to get basically nothing out of those bombs. So that's what I mean when I say you've got you've got to spend a little time figuring out what you can and can't, what you should and shouldn't be dropping on, because all of those things are very, very important if you're going to maximize... Uh, maximize the damage you're going to get out of these these these, do, these uh, air, uh, Dutch airstrikes. Team over on the eastern side, of, excuse me, western side of the map, coming back east now. So with that in mind, I'm going to try and rotate back out to the 910 line a bit. One of the reasons for this is I know that Harlem and that Kagero are still up there. I do not want them pushing around and getting this 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 wraparound flank on us for free. Plus, I know that line is still out there somewhere. He is easy damage for me to farm. And I'm, there's nothing over there that really frightens me. I'm pretty confident between my health pool, my armor scheme, and my heals that I can handle some sustained fire over here should it come to that. And there we go. Yet another fire on this lion. I can't... I've just farmed an obscene amount of damage off of this guy. And because of his goofy 3D British printer, he is still in this game. So pushing back up the nine line for a bit. I believe that smoke is dropped from the Kigero, and I'm going to run into somebody that I don't expect. I don't expect to find the Harlem there, but there he is. So we're going to swap to the AP now. This will be my first chance to use the AP this game, and i got to say, the Dutch AP at times I find to be very disappointing. This is from someone who hasn't played Houghton Leo yet, so if you own the Tier 10 Dutch Cruiser, uh, you know, let me know. I've heard the AP is better, but there are times I feel like certainly Harlem's is lacking. Certainly Johan de Witt's here doesn't always feel so amazing. It feels to me like it just lacks penetration in certain situations. And, uh, well, I'm getting a little bit of that here. I'm getting some full pins, but I'm not getting, like, the big Citadel slapping hits that I would hope to or expect out of a heavy cruiser. Should just walk to the HE here. I don't. As a result, I don't get a, I get a little bit of chip damage out of that. Six overpins. I land lots of shells, but of course there are overpins, the angle he's giving me, so I don't quite get him. I do swap back to the HE here. My team's chipping in. We may be able to bag this guy with this salvo. Down under 3k, few shells up towards the bow. There we go. But the team is still upside down two ships, nearly 300 points here. Nine minutes gone, and it's time for us to start making a move. The Kigero doesn't really frighten me over much with my Hydro. Team does claw back another kill. That's good. The Soyuz is, at the moment, doesn't have shots. And so I'm going to push up a little bit and keep trying to farm this Lion. And maybe, if nothing else, be a bit of a nuisance and threaten their backfield here. With a little bit of luck, I can get the Lexington to get pissed off and come throw planes at me so I can melt them. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he, he doesn't. But, I mean, can always hope, right? I mean... When I play an AA cruiser like this, I'm always hoping for the opportunity to piss off the enemy carrier. That is, like, one of my main goals. There's the Kigero throwing torpedoes at me to no avail. And I lose sight of the Lion as the Soyuz reverses into play. I'm going to tell him where I am as the Kigero makes a bit of an error. Somehow, this is not 
a, a, a concealment expert, Kagero. I shouldn't have been able to pick him up that far out, but I pick him up at over six kilometers. And now that we know exactly where it is, it's time for the Hydro. Now I'm going to pause here for a moment because I had, at that moment where I spotted the Kagero, I basically had two, I had a big choice to make. Do I turn to starboard and go up the nine line and chase the Kagero? Or do I go bow into the Soyuz and try to prevent that damage and use the Hydro to keep the Kagero basically locked or spotted um, so that my team can hopefully finish him off? I end up choosing the latter, which in my mind is the right play. I cannot afford to give this Soyuz a shot. I'm going to keep, keep training shells with him. I'm going to use my bombs and my Hydro and my teammate, right? My Fletcher, my buddy, the Shieldbreaker over here on my left is still in the game. Uh, he's going to be the one that actually spends most of his time shooting at and harassing this Kagero while I continue to put shells down range on the Soyuz, and my Hydro keeps this Kagero spotted. Now, the Kagero does not know where I am as long as I don't fire. So, I take a couple of shots at the Soyuz there, but now that the Soyuz is dead, they have he has no way to spot me. He has no idea where I am now. He just knows that I'm within five kilometers because of my Hydro. So now he's moved up to get out of the bombs. He smoked. That's not doing him any good, but he doesn't know that. Well, he doesn't seem to know that anyway. So team is continuing to shell the bejesus out of him, and I'm going to try and move up and come around this corner in his face, not on his broadside, where he could potentially launch torpedoes at me at the last moment, and we're going to try and get him off the board. The good news is, is that it's not going to come to that. Shieldbreaker's moving up, continuing to put shells in on him. I'm getting all of this spotting damage because of my Hydro. You see his torpedoes there. He launched his torpedoes the other direction around the other side of the island, thinking I might be there. I wasn't, and we secure another kill. We've caught our way back into this game now. It's tied on ships. We're only about, well, it was tied on ships. We're still only about 150 points down. That's recoverable. Eight minutes to play. And look at this lion. He's back up to 40,000 health. This dude has absorbed just a stupid amount of of fire, bomb, and HE shell damage for me. He takes another 10k there because of some bomb hits, and I'm going to start throwing shells down range in a minute. On the behind, from behind, this lovely smoke screen that my division mate is leaving for me. Ah, team play is a glorious thing in World of Warships, isn't it? Now, I had AP in the barrel right there, and I do get a decent AP salvo out of it. You see they're about 6k, but probably should have gone for the HE. And I will switch back to the HE here, expecting him to angle away to the point where it's just not useful. Right, I was being spotted by those planes way down on the H line because of my gun bloom, but as they wander out or get shot down, now even though I'm not in the smoke, this lion can no longer spot me. One of the things that you end up having to kind of learn to work with 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 uh, Johan in particular, but all the all basically heavy cruisers in general, right? Is this 12 second reload? It feels bad sometimes. But you don't have a choice, and uh, and there are times you're just like, oh, come on, come on, reload, 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 reload. And But yeah, I am finally going to get this guy here. I'm going to land a few bombs on his deck. at about He's got about 2,800 HP. A couple bombs goes out there, and bam. Enemy care coming back for my Fletcher Div mate. I pop a defensive fire with those HE bombs. I know what those can do to him. I do not want this to be allowed. He does end up taking uh, a, a, some damage, not like catastrophic damage, but certainly a noteworthy chunk. Luckily for me, though, None of those bombs are going to make it back to the deck. Excuse me, none of those planes are going to make it back to the deck of the Lexington. Double fire on the Zeton in the cap here, trying to keep him um, lit and pissed off. <laughs> Shooting at me, not at my div mate. Mission accomplished so far. And yes, the carrier's coming back. I want to pause something else real quick. I want you guys to notice this. One of the things that I talk about when I talk about building cruisers for anti-aircraft fire, and people laugh at me all the time, Raptor, why do you take that AA module? right? The defensive fire module. This instance right here is expressly why. Defensive fire normally lasts 40 seconds. The module in slot two gives you eight more seconds of useful time and reduces the cooldown by about 10 seconds or so. So you can have it up longer and down less. The carrier came in with that bomb strike. I popped my defensive fire and here he is. He's close enough. He's able to get this, these planes come back. My defensive fire, you see there along the bottom of the screen is still active for 13 more seconds as he brings in the follow-up strike, which means the entire time he's trying to strike me for both of those, those, um, those attempts, my DFA was up. None of those planes got back to the carrier. I wiped out every single one of them. That's why I tell people, if you're going to build for, for AA, 
you should consider the defensive fire module in slot two on certain ships. It's not the sort of thing that I recommend everywhere, but if you're playing an AA cruiser, a Cleveland or Johan de Witt, basically any of the high tier Dutch cruisers, I think there's absolutely valid case to be made for it if you're, if you're taking your AA defenses seriously. We're up a ship, but down on points. Zeton's gonna ground himself or at least scrape up against the island as I bag a stern fire there. I think, I thought at this moment he grounded himself, but turns out he hadn't. We catch a glimpse of the carrier. Damn it. I go looking for him with my bombs. We lose sight of him almost instantly. In that moment, the Zeton gets a good salvo on me, almost seven or seven or eight K there, as I'm still trying to get another fire to stick on him. Right now, our problem is the team doesn't own enough real estate, right? We're 160 points down. That gap is growing because we don't own the middle of the board. And there can, the enemy team is continuing to push, which may or may not work out for them. We'll see. Enemy's eaten down under 500 health as we bag the kill on the buffalo. That narrows the gap to a little less than 100 points. The carrier is still determined to come back for me. This is, this is the kind of thing that I love, right? I've put my ship in a position where the carrier feels like he has to deal with me, and I'm just laughing because I'm murdering his planes, and it's glorious. He took some bombs in the stern. I get a fire there. His DCP goes out. But again, I'm going to pause real, brief, real briefly here. Remember, his DCP is going to instantly repair that fire and last for a while. But what's going to happen over the next few minutes after I deal with something else and come back to the carrier, his damage control party is going to be on cooldown. I'm going to land a bunch of full duration fires on him. Now, full duration fire on a carrier is only five seconds, but they hurt pretty hard. They hurt pretty badly. And yeah, it's uh, that, that damage adds up over time. Now, other thing I want to point out, look at the minimap real briefly. You see that to Lin that was an E5. While I was fighting the Zeton, I saw him, he got spotted in that position. I know he's coming up here to, to kind of to try and fight me. So I'm expecting to see him come around this island on my port side. I don't know quite when. I, right now I'm focused on getting shells downrange on the carrier. There he comes in with the AP. Smart play on his part. My armor holds up as I kind of expected it to. I wasn't super concerned about him citadeling me. So I was kind of just letting him like, all right, let's see what happens here. And now I put the AP in the barrels and the duel, the duel is on. The carrier tries to come back in and exert some of his presence as well. He's going to lose more planes for his trouble. In fact, he's going to lose, well, all of them. I try for a dive bomb, uh, an airstrike here on this Talin, but he dodges out of it. As we do land one Citadel up forward. And now, I'll pause again real briefly. Now I'm starting to enter the danger zone, right? Because this Talin has four kilometer torpedoes i've got my hydro up i'll know exactly when he fires them but i need to kill him before they get into the water or i could be in a whole world of trouble so i'm trying to give the give him the bow keep the profile narrow and with this final shot i'm i'm not going to go for the bow i'm going to go for the superstructure because if i put them in the bow they're going to bounce i need to get the kill i only needed a couple of thousand damage i got a full pin and an over pin and whew, we got him dead before he was able to bring his torpedoes to action so now, back to the HE, and fun with the enemy carrier. As we're cr 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 uh, approaching 225,000 damage in this ship. I've learned to really, really, really like Johan de Witt, guys. I've had some just absolutely ridiculous games in this ship, both in ranked and in randoms. Her AA is amazing. Her survivability is impressive between the heal, the armor scheme, and, you know, the HE shells and everything. Look at these, look at these fires. These fires are all sticking. These fires that I'm landing on this Lexington now, his DCP is down. Those are all five-second fires, which burn him for, I don't know, five or six percent of his HP every time. So they add up. He's going to try one more time to come in with the torpedo strike. I'm going to pop my last defensive fire. I know the game's almost over. I want my A expert. There it is. And, um, well, he gets a little salty in chat. But, I mean, let's be honest, right? How many people believe that AA is worthless because so many streamers and YouTubers complain about anti-aircraft fire. It's like, guys, AA is not worthless. It's not worthless. If you put a, put a little effort into it, invest a few points, maybe a module, you will absolutely see returns, especially in an instance like this where you're dealing with a down-tiered carrier on a, what is arguably one of the better AA cruisers at Tier 9. You will absolutely make that guy cry and is mm, chef's kiss glorious when you get to do that trust me it feels oh so good
Now, before we get away here, as we look at the, the end screens, I want to point out something because it absolutely blows my mind when I look at these numbers, right? Have a look, have a look at how much damage I did to this opposing, um, this opposing lion. Absolutely insane, the amount of damage that guy absorbed. Over 100,000 points of damage that guy absorbed. Just crazy. Just crazy. Those British battleships, as long as you don't, like, if you can't get citadels on them, if you're just getting full pens and fires and stuff, they can heal back all of that and stay in the game, man. You got to focus them out every chance that you can. It's absolutely, absolutely silly and brutal. Well, listen, guys, there's our quick uh, battle report from the bridge of Johan de Witt. I hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.